All right, this is going to be on repentance and repenting. So, does the Bible tell us to repent of sin, or does it tell us to repent of unbelief, as the popular thing that's going around today? Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, now, the Ephesus was a Greek city in Greece, and Paul wrote his book, his epistle, his letter to the Ephesians. So when you read the book of Ephesians, that's what this is. It's talking about this church, the church at Ephesus. That's what you call people that live in Ephesus were called Ephesians. So, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Now, Jesus is speaking to the believing church in Ephesus. Okay? I mean, if you're in a church, you obviously should believe, right? Unto the, church, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Verse 2, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And, of course, they'll try to tell you that that's talking about Paul, but they're the, they're the ones that are liars. So, And hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So Jesus had something against them, because they left their first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and re will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So he said that twice. He said, remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. Repent to what? Unbelief? This is a church in Ephesus. How is a church going to repent of their unbelief? You wouldn't be a member of a church if you didn't believe. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. So is Jesus telling the believing church to repent of what? Their unbelief? Well, that's what these idiots that tell you that that's all you have to do is repent of your unbelief are teaching you. No, Jesus is telling the unbelieving church in Ephesus to repent. It's a believing church. So what are they going, what are they repenting of? He told them they left their first love. He said that they are falling. They, and remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works. Do the things you did when in the beginning. That's what he's telling you. So, do we just have to um, repent of unbelief? There's a very famous pastor in Arizona that tells you that that's all you got to do. You know, just repent of your unbelief and believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Well, I don't know. Um, in James chapter 2 and verse 19, James says, Thou believest that there is one God? Now this is somebody that believes, right? Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Does the devil believe in God? Oh yeah, he believes in God. All the devils believe in God. But do they repent? Do they turn away from their wickedness? Uh, no. No, they sure don't. 
And one of their famous little tricks is they'll tell you, well, God repented in the book of Jonah. God repented. And what they're basically doing is comparing themselves to a sinless God. Do you realize that's what they're doing? They're comparing themselves to God. And when God repent, repented, means he was going to do something. He had full intention of doing something, like when he warned Nineveh in the book of Jonah. He warned Nineveh that unless they repented, that he was going to destroy them. Well, they turned from their sin in sackcloth and ashes, and then the Lord repented of destroying them. There's a big difference between those sinners that tell you just believe and a sinless God. Big difference, people. Big difference. They're idiots. They compare themselves to God. What fools. Let's read a few things what the Bible says about repentance. Matthew 3, 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know what Jesus said about John the Baptist? He said, Of all those born of women, there is not a greater than John the Baptist. In Mark 4, 17, From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mark 1, 15, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Mark 6, 12, And they went out and preached that men should repent. Repent of what? Jesus told the church at Ephesus, a believing church, to repent. Twice. Luke 13, 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke 13, 5. Basically in the same breath. Jesus said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Twice. He said it. Almost in the same breath. Luke 17, 3. Now listen to this carefully. Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee. In other words, you know, you know what trespassing is. It's being someplace that you're not supposed to be. So if, you're, if your brother does something that offends you, he does something bad to you, he trespasses against you. It says, take heed to yourself, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. What does repent mean here? Believe? Oh, well, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he believes, forgive him? Believes what? No, repent means if he's sorry for what he did. That's what it means. It means he changes his mind because he's sorry. Luke 17, 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Hmm. Acts 3, 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 8.22 Repent therefore of this thy unbelief? No. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness. And pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness? Huh. Acts 17.30 And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now God, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 
Acts 26.20, but showed first unto them at Damascus and, and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Oh. Revelation 2.21 speaking about the uh, Jezebel in the church. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Oh, and I gave her space to believe of her fornication? Well, that's what these idiots are telling you, repent of your unbelief. And I gave her space to re repent of her unbelief of her fornication, and she repented not. That's what these idiots want you to believe. Heretics. They're not idiots. They're heretics. They're satanic heretics sent to destroy the church. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, except they change their unbelief of their deeds. No, repent of their deeds. Revelation 3.19 As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So, repent of unbelief or turn from sin? John 14 and verse 15, Jesus speaking, If ye love me, if you love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. John 15, 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. 1 John 2 and verse 3, And Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. 1 John 5, 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth, or angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So even if you've got a Jew that does that keeps the commandments, they got to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, the, the dragon wasn't angry with the woman that didn't keep the commandments and didn't have the testimony of Jesus. The dragon was angry with those that kept the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So what commandments are we supposed to keep? Here you go. Matthew 22 and 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, a doctor of the law, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, speaking to Jesus, asking him a question. And he says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the, thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you love the Lord, you're not going to worship idols. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him or kill him or try to steal his wife from him, you know. And what can I tell you? Love the Lord. Love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, repent of unbelief. Well... Just like James said, Believest thou that there is one God? Thou doest well. 
even the devils believe and tremble. Yep, even the devils are smarter than a lot of these fake Christians. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I hope you uh, put the nail in the cost of co coffin of this repent of unbelief garbage. All glory to Jesus. Amen.